Hello, my name's Adam Novak, and now we'll finally be looking at a 3D Mandelbrot set in Blender. We will first be adding a primitive object, being a grid, and we'll be iterating its vertices along the Z axis, displacing it according to its Mandelbrot coordinates. This video is a tutorial, so please pause the video, open Blender, and get ready to start coding in Python using the Blender application Python interface. So now let's get started and we'll open Blender and get to the right window that we require. To do this, we'll hold control and push the right arrow about three or four times until you have the same window that I can see here. I will also turn on screencast keys. This will not make things easier for you, though they will show up any errors I may type. The next thing we'll do is turn on the system console. This is our debugging window, so whenever any mistakes are in our code, it won't show up on the screen here, we'll have to open up our Blender console. Now we'll start coding in Blender using Python, by opening up a text editor. Almost every button inside of Blender can be accessed using a text editor. And to start, we'll import the Python libraries from Blender by typing import bpy, and from bpy we'll import context because in this case we'll be using the active object context to iterate over the Mandelbrot set. I will do an entire lesson specifically on the Blender API because that is very complex and it was hard for me to get my head around, even knowing a bit of Python. Just subscribe to be ready for when that video is released. And now we'll continue coding. We'll put a comment under which we'll set our Mandelbrot resolution, which we'll call Mandel Res, which is going to be a constant. This for now will be 20, which is quite small for debugging purposes. Beneath this, we'll put our vertice count, which is going to be equal to the Mandelbrot resolution plus one to the power of two. This plus one represents the grid going from zero to 20, including the number zero. The next thing we'll do is simply set our constants. These constants will allow us to move the Mandelbrot set to the left or right, up or down, or zoom in and out as we see fit. There will also be another value being called the randomizer, which is the constant which is iterated or added to the Mandelbrot set every time it is iterated over. To know more about this, you can watch a great video done by Numberphile, which taught me how to do this, not by a lesson, but it just gave me enough information to be able to create the algorithm. Or you can watch my other video in which I create another Mandelbrot set using Python and create a Mandelbrot set using colors, a traditional one that you might be more familiar with. Now we'll continue coding, and we'll set a zoom equal to 1, then an x offset being equal to 0, which will be our origin or our starting point, and also a y offset being equal to 0, so we can move the axes up and down. Then we'll add our randomizer, which we just mentioned before, and we'll make this equal to 1, which is a good starting pattern. The next constant we'll add is our precision, and this will be our maximum amount of iterations we'll allow the Mandelbrot set to take place over before we stop it just in case it starts to escape. This value also represents the amount of detail that may be inside our Mandelbrot set because it's the amount of iterations that will take place. So having too low a value will give us very unprecise results. The next thing we do is to make the zoom much more efficient. To do this, I like to put one divided by our zoom value. This is because we need a value to multiply by our vertex point to get a zoom value that we intuitively understand when we look at it. So to do this, we need a reciprocal value to multiply by our vertex points. Now let's get a move on and let's start actually running our code. To do anything active now, we'll start off by importing our mesh. We'll use our imported library and the operation of a mesh. To find out how to access this code, or so I don't have to type out the whole thing down the bottom here, we can see that we can use control and space and we can auto type. By scrolling up here, we can see the primitive we want, which is a primitive grid. So we can use the auto complete using control and space to auto complete and make sure we've typed it correctly. And we can also access the internal values of the primitive grid, such as the X subdivisions, Y subdivisions and the radius. So we can see what needs to be typed in. Now we just copy and paste the text above and we'll insert the X subdivisions and Y subdivisions that we require. These are going to be equal to the Mandelbrot resolution plus one because we want the value of 0 to 20, which is 21 subdivisions. 
We will need to enter the same values for the Y subdivisions because we want an exact grid in this case. The next thing we'll need to control in this grid is the radius or the size and we'll make this equal to 0.5. By doing this we'll get a Mandelbrot set which actually fits the values which you're most familiar with seeing as we iterate over the grid and get its axes points. Here's a quick look at the full line of code being both the X and Y subdivisions equal to Mandel resolution plus one and the radius equal to 0.5. And just below it, we'll set access to a part of the library so we can recall it as we see fit over the code. This will simply make the rest of our code a lot neater and a lot easier to read. It will also make it a lot quicker to type. So all this line of code actually does is allow us to access the object data. And we've called it vert coordinate because we're going to try access the vertex coordinates using it. So now all we have to do is run our code. So we'll start off with a comment. Now to access every vertex inside of our grid, we'll iterate over the vertexes in the range from zero to the entire vertex count. This is so we can access every individual vertice one by one using this vertex over the loop. This is because every vertex inside of an object has a number associated with from zero and it counts up as increasing vertices are added to the object. So as we iterate over this range, putting these numbers of decreasing values into this point, we are iterating over every vertice getting its X location one at a time. By putting the number zero after this coordinate, it means we are getting the X location by putting the number one here, as we do here for the Y location, we are getting the Y coordinate of this polygon. Now that we have got the polygons or the vertices coordinates, we need to get its final value, which is multiplying it by the scale and adding the offsets as we see fit. For the purposes of haste, we'll simply copy and paste this code to the next line, changing the X values to Y. So it's also doing the same code now for the Y values. And all we've got to do now is use these values to iterate over the Mandelbrot set. If you want to know more about how to do this, watch the other videos in the link. Otherwise, the Z location is simply equal to the complex of the X and the Y values squared minus the randomizer. Changing this randomizer value will just give you some other interesting Mandelbrot sets. And now we set a count value. By doing it here, it will be reset to the value of 1 every time we run this Mandelbrot value. And now while this count is less than the precision and the absolute of the Z location is between 0 and 2, we'll continue to run the script. So as you can see, the maximum times this script will run is the value of the precision and it will keep running until the absolute values of the Z location are blown outside of 0 to 2. To make sure we keep running this Mandelbrot set and iterating over these values, we'll now inside of the while loop do Z location is equal to itself squared, take randomizer again, so it keeps performing the same iteration. And to make sure we don't get stuck here, make sure we put our count is equal to itself plus one. So our final Z displacement of the vertice will be equal to the count times by a proportional amount to make sure we can visualize it properly. To do this, we're gonna make our Z final value be equal to count to the power of 0.02. Then we're gonna take 1.07 from that and multiply it by three. This is just an efficient scaling mechanism I've found. And you can find other ones, but it's just worked for me. So now to make this actually work, we're gonna to have to do one more line of code and displace the Z axis of this vertice to be equal to the Z final value. And that's it, we can run the code. To get the Z axis of this vertice, we'll put number two into the list, which is the third item in the list. And then all we have to do is make sure this Z value is now equal to our Z final value. And then as always, we do a quick debugging and look over our script because there's always mistakes somewhere. And it's on line 24, so here it is. We don't need to import BPY. We've already imported BPY. And that's meant to be context.active object. Let's hope that was it, and we'll try and run our script again. 
breathes heavily in anticipation and it worked. And here we go, we can have a quick look at it. Let's change some of these values to make sure it's all working. Change it to 200. Here's the increase in resolution. Let's change the X offset, move it to the side by one. Perfect, it matches up. Let's move it up by one. That's not gonna work, there's nothing there. Let's move it up here. There you go, it matches perfectly. And as you can see, we've got a Mandelbrot set. And there will be more um, episodes on Mandelbrot sets. The, this is a plainer one. It, there's not too much to be involved in this one. The next Mandelbrot set in a 3D environment will be putting a cursor to its origin center location and multiplying the vertex by the matrix of the origin of the cursor or the object origin because that's where the cursor location is. So subscribe and keep updated for that one, which is going to be really cool and soon. And by doing that one, we can also iterate the Mandelbrot set over any object that we put into the 3D environment, which has some really cool implications, but it's a bit more complex, so we'll start here. Um, I do have a whole course on Python if you want to learn more about Python. All the resources should hopefully be in the description, otherwise I haven't uploaded them yet. And um, stay in touch, now's the perfect time to request uh, tutorials or courses because um, I'm currently making them. So if you want anything specific for yourself, now's the best time. Otherwise, please subscribe, have fun, or support us on Patreon like always.